Welcome to my main video for Star Wars Legion. I already filmed another video about the same game. In that one I cover the miniatures in detail. In this one we talk about the game as a game. We talk about gameplay and the way the gameplay incorporates the components. Star Wars Legion is a miniature battle game set in the world of Star Wars, which is an intellectual property that fascinates me very much. I like it very much. I didn't used to like it as much. If you ask me in the early 2000s, I was still traumatized by the prequel trilogy. Then after episode 7 and 8, I'm back to being a believer. And it has been a while since we had a miniature game set in the universe of Star Wars that depicts land battles. For space battles, of course, we have X-Wing, but for land battles, I believe this may be the last one before Legion. Star Wars miniature battles, and it won an award in 1991, so you know it's not a recent game. Although sometimes I still think of the 80s as about 20 years ago, don't, don't bring my bubble, don't bring my illusion or I may just crumble to dust. Some of you may wonder, wait a second, but there is a game that I played uh, that's called Star Wars Miniatures. Yes, I played it too, it's a great game, I reviewed it uh, one or two years ago, I believe, uh, and I like it very much. I have a sizable collection uh, of minis from that game. Funny thing, that is not a miniature game, it is a game with miniatures. Here I'm talking about miniature games in the way uh, the term is used in wargaming, which is a game that takes place in continuous space, not in a gridded, on a gridded board, in a board divided in discrete partitions, but rather in normal space with uh, landscape features there and usually you have ways uh, like a ruler or other ways of measuring distances and it's a fun way of, of playing tactical battles especially a way that I like very much because of the flexibility because you're moving in real space so movement tends to be a little more realistic in detail you don't have the problem of like you know moving diagonally from square to square on a gridded board it always feels a little a little uh, gamey. So, uh, although I like Star Wars miniatures very much, I do not consider it a miniature war game proper precisely because it takes place on maps divided in squares. Star Wars, Le Star Wars Legion, and not like that. Finally, a game where we're gonna fight and the battlefield is gonna look and quote unquote behave like a real battlefield, or at least the space of the confrontation is gonna mirror the way space works in our, in our universe. Without further ado, let me show you how Star Wars Legion works. Each unit in the game has a card such as this one. Units in the game have between one and four models, so listen to this basic set. Here you will have a description of possible abilities that they may have, they may apply in different situations, different parts of the turn. Here we have the weapons that they have on the left side you see the weapons that they use in melee and that is indication of the number and type of dice that they use to attack for example in melee the stormtroopers use the black eight-sided die and then here we have the range attack with an indication of the range up to which you can attack between one and three use and there is a special measuring tool for that and this is the number of dice that they roll again this number of dice uh, is to applied to each model that is actually attacking. Here we have the, uh, the how is it called, the resistance level, the um, survival level. Basically, when a unit takes a number of hits, which is equal to that number there, the unit loses a model. Obviously, that means that each hit in a unit of stormtroopers takes down a stormtrooper. This is important, though, in case of other units. For example, Darth Vader takes a bunch of hits before you eliminate his model. Then we have a number here which indicates suppression. When a unit is attacked and receives hits from range combat, it takes a suppression tokens. So there are ways of removing them. For example, by rallying, you automatically also can remove them at the end of a turn. But if the number of suppression tokens is higher than the courage level that you have here, then the unit loses actions. Units usually can perform two actions. Every time they activate, they lose one. If they are suppressed, that is, they have more more suppression tokens than the courage. 
this indication here doesn't mean that he's always suppressed but that he cannot be suppressed the guy is tough you should know that by now there's a similar number here for vehicles if there is a number here that means that a certain number of damage points inflicted on it may cause special damage to it in this section of the card also we have a die here which indicates the type of die that is rolled in defense uh, so as you can see red or white and then we have the surges if you have played games like descent imperial assault you know what that means it means that custom dice have the symbol here which may mean different things so for example when a stormtrooper fires and rolls a surge that counts as a regular as a regular hit when defending when defending the speeder bikers that roll surges they count that as a defense slash dodge other people may not have that and then finally we have a number of, of dots or traits or little hyphens here and that indicates the speed so when you're moving Darth Vader you will use the one moving the one moving tool the moving tool measure tool number one and then here the two and for the speeder bikers which are the fastest species in the game you have you have these so when you play the game you will place all of these cards in front of you all of the cards of the units that you're actually um, using in that game and then you will give them activation tokens for example here there is one for Darth Vader so you'll put on the card for Darth Vader trust me this is that one then we have the ones for the troopers and this one is for vehicles this is important and of course the opponent will do the same next at the beginning of each turn each player selects a card a command card they will indicate the number and sometimes type of units that you can act Activate in the order that you want. Basically, each turn there is a number of units that you will choose to activate. That is, you get to choose when they activate, and then the remaining command tokens that have not been assigned by orders are shuffled together face down. One thing at a time. Each player has a deck such as this one. The decks are different because there are different abilities depending on whether your commander is Luke Skywalker or Darth Vader. They just motivate their people in different ways. What can I say? So each player at the beginning of each turn will select a card secretly. Suppose Luke Skywalker selected this one and our so Luke Skywalker selected uh, this one and Darth Vader selected uh, this one easy peasy then they reveal the two cards uh, and the order the different numbers that you see here will indicate the priority so the lowest number will get to go first then you resolve effects that may be described here at the bottom of the card but very important here you have an indication of the number of units that again you get to decide uh, how to activate suppose that actually that Darth Vader has selected a card that lets him give two orders then he takes uh, the orders for two units that he has for example that unit of stormtroopers there and the bikes and you place them by it by those units and he can be himself by the way but he doesn't have to yeah you know what yeah, he's kind of selfish he wants to select himself the other tokens for the remaining units that you can activate are shuffled face down and they form your own command pool the opponent does the same the opponent also places command tokens next to units based on the number and type of units indicated on the command card remaining tokens are shuffled the place face down so basically then starting with priority players will alternate activating one of the units and when it is your turn you can choose to activate a unit that has a face up order you activate and at the end of the of the activation you flip the token face down to indicate the unit just went and cannot activate until the next turn or instead of using a face up order you draw one of the other tokens and so you so you activate the unit that was randomly selected after you activate it again you place a token there to indicate that the unit already went to simplify things i'm going to remove them 
these tokens from the battlefield but that i hope you get a sense of how it works it's a nice balance there between randomness and well not randomness a unit that activates uh, can take two actions. You have some special actions such as getting an aim token which will allow you to reroll dice when you attack or a dodge token which allows you to cancel normal hits that you receive in combat. But most of the actions are going to be move and attack and that's just how how miniature combat games work. For a move action, you take the moving template that corresponds to the speed of the unit that you're activating. Suppose we're activating this one trooper, so we take this one here, and then we simply, for each model, we place the movement template by the base of each model, and we can, and we can bend it any way we want. And then we simply place our model to the other side, to the other side. Each unit has a leader and it's important that the unit maintains cohesion, that is that at the end of movement, the units, the, the models that belong to that unit are within uh, the one, the number one movement template from from the leader and you don't have to go all the way to the other side of your movement template of course you can be a little shorter if you so desire so that would be for the movement action and then of course you also have have combat but again you can choose to organize actions any way you want you may fire and then move looking for cover you may move and then simply decide to dodge because you realize that you're not in a safe position stuff like that when you attack, like sometimes it happens uh, with fantasy flight games, you read the procedure and it's like, what is this, like 14 steps to resolve a single attack? Worry not, it's just that in the rulebook they have to take into account every possible effect that might happen. In most cases, when you attack, it is simply you, at you roll attack dice. The opponent rolls defense dice. You subtract the, the defense from the from the attack uh, successes, and whatever hits are left are applied to the target. So worry not if like, but you should do this and change that and apply the surge, apply that mega effect. Those don't always happen. The very the basic idea is very simple. When you're attacking, you choose one of the weapons on the card of the unit that is attacking, depending on range. For example, we decide to attack with a blaster. And for range, you measure the distance between the leader and the closest unit, uh, the closest model in the unit that you're targeting. This is the measuring tool that you use for range. As you can see, each segment counts as one distance so right now here we are at range at range one actually not even one ah uh, there you go perfect a range uh, between one and two so we are we are attacking when we are, and we check the range when we attack we look again at the type and number of dice that we have and we pick up that number of that that type of die we take out one die of that type for each model. For example, we have four people that are firing with this die here with the white eight-sided die. And so we pick up four dice. Only we can't, because the game, mysterious enough, only comes with the three dice per type. Given the four is the basic number of models in a unit that is mysterious, I guess that the force is not the only mysterious thing in the universe. Anyways, you collect the dice that you're supposed to roll, or as many as you can, and then you roll them. Hooray! Blank result. I think you know what they mean. The symbol here means critical hit, cannot be uh, blocked. Uh, this one is a regular hit, and then you may have the surge, which may be a blank, or maybe do different things, depending on what your card says. Oh, speaking of, of targeting and going against the enemy, also it's important if you check line of sight if at least uh, each line of sight you check it from your leader to each unit belonging to the opponent to each model in the unit that you're targeting so if at least half of the models in that unit are protected then the opponent gets covered depending if it's light cover or heavy cover in any case you probably guess the point that the point is you get to cancel some hits so you will have a certain number of hits that you can then 
try to manipulate using game effects. The opponent, for each hit that you scored after you did all of your magic and mind tricks using whatever game effects, the opponent then gets to roll a defense die for each hit that you scored. And the die that is rolled depends on the type of die indicated on the card of the target, which may be red, red or white. Again, also before then you can use dodge tokens to remove hits. Suppose that when all is said and done we have three hits, then the defending unit rolls. These, uh, each of these defense dice removes a hit. Uh, the surge symbol removes a hit if you have on your card uh, an indication that tells you that the surge symbols equal shields. That's how it works. So when you when you subtract the defense from the attack, you lose a certain number of wounds and you apply them again. In many cases, a wound removes a model. Pew. Otherwise, a uh, wound counts as a wound, and then you simply apply it and you add it. For example, let's suppose that somebody attacked that guy, gave it two hits, uh, uh, and then you simply place those next to the multi wound units that multi wound units that were hit. This is the general idea. There are a couple of other things, but that's pretty much it. Move, attack, perform other special actions, apply a ton of special effects if they uh, play a role with the units and the scenario that you have selected. And you continue like this for up to six turns. Less, fewer, if one of the two players is completely obliterated before then, in which case the other player is the winner. Otherwise, the game goes to the end of the sixth round, and at that point, victory is based on the victory conditions of the scenario that you have decided to play. I like this game quite a bit. I think gameplay is really strong. What, what is to like there? Uh, to start with the battle cards, uh, the orders that you give at the beginning of each round, and, and the order system in general. It's fun to give orders um, by using the cards, and it's fun to deal with the crazy stuff that the random activation of the tokens will cause. So there is that element, and it's a really nice balance there between the strategy, the strategy and the decisions that you make when choosing the card to play, and then the order to issue or I should say the units which you orders to and then dealing with whatever is left which is the chaos of battle I personally like randomness in war games I think it really fits the theme of chaos in battles uh, uh, people panicking, lack of communication, things explode, sensorial overload, there should be an element of chaos and confusion and the order system here uh, portrays that Chaos and confusion again, but not to the point of the game feels perfectly random. Here we have a nice balance there between decisions and randomness. Check, I like that element. When it comes to the activation of the units, uh, I like the fact that we don't have to use rulers. Okay, nine inches, oh, this unit can shoot and up to eight inches or 15 with a penalty, etc., etc. That you have those templates and so you don't have to worry about those. You grab the right one and you're done. It's something that I liked in Wings of War, it's something that I liked in X-Wing, which seems to me to be an, an evolution from Wings of War. But in X-Wing sometimes I get confused because there are just so many templates to choose from. Here the fact that you only have three, but you have some flexibility there. It makes uh, things more practical and, and so makes gameplay uh, more accessible from the pragmatic point. You don't have to worry too much about where the components are. It feels very intuitive, gives you great flexibility, but not too much, but not too much when it comes to the vehicles. So just by having those two notches on the basis of the vehicles and forcing the vehicles to move, um, to place the movement template on those notches, again, you have, you capture the different way vehicles should move. So I like that very much. Now, something that is just a personal preference, I'm not entirely sold in the system, um, about the system here, is um, when I play tactical war games, miniature war games uh, that are about individual characters, where you see the white of their eyes or the black and the slates of the helmets for the stormtroopers, when you feel up close and personal, I like um, 
I like the fact that there is a command system, the units need to be closer to the leader, fine. But I don't like the restriction to be too strict here. You have to end the movement for your units very close to your leader. I would prefer a little bit of flexibility there instead of having to be next to the leader at the end of movement. You could choose to separate a miniature with a penalty, but you could have that tactical flexibility. Also, something else that I like is to have um, each miniature accountable uh, individually. That is here, the leader checks line of sight for everybody, and so you may have people that individually don't have line of sight, but they still get to fire with their unit. And also you're firing against the entire unit of the opponent. If it's an individual, that makes perfect sense. If it's a group of individuals, again, somehow you can hit everybody, although some may not may not be entirely uh, easy for you to see. So there is a certain abstract abstract element when you have a multi-model unit that is treated as a single entity. I personally prefer games in which you activate a unit at a time, which may be a small group of people, but then each fires individually, checks line of sight individually, maybe hit individually, etc, etc. Small gripe, if nothing else, I'm mentioning to say, while I usually don't like the system all that much, uh, or at least it's not my favorite way of handling uh, tactical wargaming, I'm mysteriously fine with it here. Somehow it didn't bother me all that much. I mentioned in case there are other picky uh, war gamers uh, out there well maybe you have my same skepticism about the system and yet somehow I can't I don't, I don't know why I don't I can't explain exactly but it worked it didn't bother me all that much it sometimes was giving up wound to a single model that didn't really uh, look like should receive a wound uh, and again of course you just with your imagination you fill the gap between the abstraction and what you see in the battlefield you imagine that the character shot before you know turning a corner was hit and then rolls and behind an obstacle and that's when you add the wound. So by manipulating in your head the time of when that happens, you know, the, well, within the activation, the unit moved and attack and the other unit was also moving and attacking. It's really a small, I wouldn't say problem, but a trait of the design uh, and possibly because everything else felt pretty tight. The gameplay was very smooth, very intuitive. It really captured the flavor, it really captured the theme. Probably because of that, I was like, ah, what else? There were so many other reasons for me to be interested that the fact that sometimes uh, there were things that were a little bit abstract uh, didn't bother me, didn't bother me at all. So, uh, speaking of the theme, it really works for me. I really like how the different characters behave in ways that are recognizable to me uh, from the movies, from the TV shows, from the comic books. I really uh, like uh, how the fact there's the fact that Luke Skywalker and and Darth Vader may pretty much uh, return blast hits to the opponent. So sometimes if you try to hit them and they have a dodge token, boom, you get hit back. Very thematic, and they're just all of these little things. So the stormtroopers that have uh, stronger that have pretty strong weapons and can attack a lot. The speeders also have strong weapons. The uh, rebels that are nimble, they can be pretty sneaky. They can get dodge tokens. So definitely a lot of theme ingrained within the abilities and skills of the characters with, within uh, the different pools of dice that they use. So you do not have to worry too much about making the system work thematically. There's a lot of hardwiring that has been done and I'm happy about it. Yes, if you give them some extra cards, some special ability, you have to remember to make it work that way. But in general, the theme feels very well ingrained within within the system itself. It, it, uh, it plays out, it happens naturally, and I like that a lot. Um, one thing, it's uh, this is a starter set, there's no doubt. It's a complete game, yes, but as is, my concern is that probably is not gonna have that uh, much replay value. In a large battle, you're pretty much gonna use every model that is in this set, which means that uh, the battles won't be all that different. You can put Darth Vader here rather than there next time. Different scenario, but we know that one of the fun thing about uh, about miniature war games is to try with different compositions of 
of soldiers, uh, weapons, etc., etc. There isn't much, uh, there's not gonna be that much variety there. So I believe, like it happens uh, with other miniature systems, that uh, the core set really is a starter set. And if you wanna keep playing, you will probably feel the need, the desire to uh, to acquire more, more more sets, which may be a little bit expensive, but again, miniature war gamers know what they're getting into when they start playing a new system. I guess you could repurpose some miniatures from Star Wars miniatures game by by Wizards of the Coast, but frankly, quality quality wise, I like these miniatures better. If you had the money to invest and the time to build them and even more woo to paint them, I think you're just gonna have a more fun experience with this one. Especially if you mix these miniatures with those from that game because of different scale, I think it's gonna look like a little bit messy. So, uh, there is that. It's a game that to have replay value will require investment and that is simply in the nature of this type of game. You know, again, you know what you're getting, you're getting into. Uh, one last thing is Imperial Assault, but I already have Imperial Assault, why do I need another game that is kind of like it? It ain't. This is not like Imperial Assault, it's very different. Um, just mechanically, just mechanically, uh, the fact that you're moving in continuous free space gives you very different tactical flavor. The fact that you're looking for a line of sight, that you're trying to guess uh, the distance. By the way, the game allows the game allows pre-measurement. Forget about if you're playing against me. There is no pre-measurement in miniature war games. That is the law. At least in, in small mark, the independent gaming state of Marco Land. It's more fun this way. So it's it's fun to do all of those things. So the flavor, the pace, the interaction is very different. It is very different from uh, from Imperial Assault. I would say mainly that the similarities are the fact that you're rolling dice and there is a surge, etc., etc. But that is a system that now has been shared by so many different games that, uh, I don't know, you may as well say, well, I have Descent, why do I need Star Wars? I have Doom, the board game, why do I need Star Wars Legion? Maybe you need it because you love Star Wars and this is a fun way of creating tactical battles set in the universe of Star Wars. Gameplay, flow, interaction, uh, the, the order system, they all work in different ways from Imperial Assault. This definitely is not Imperial Assault without a board. It is a very different game that also happens to have plastic dudes and dudettes representing Star Wars characters. And that also happens to, uh, to have dice with symbols. Other than that, it really is its own game. If your main concern is like it's gonna be redundant, it's not. Doesn't mean that it's a game for you, but it means that the concern of like, I'm gonna have two versions of the same game is one that you shouldn't really worry about. Star Wars Legion, I definitely am happy that I played the game. I like the system very much. I still, I'm still a bit on defense. I don't know if I wanna, if I wanna invest uh, all that is required to expand the collection and give it more replay value. For what it is, as a starter set, it is a good one. Again, it requires investment of time, energy, and money to keep the system fresh uh, after a while. But as a starter set, and as an example of a game system, Star Wars Legion definitely is a very good product, very good game, definitely fun to play.